So my circuit is still in the bootloader mode because I'm not done using the circuit components website. Let me navigate over to the tab that I'm most excited about, which is the sample import tab. Click this. And my circuit's connected, it's in bootloader mode, everything seems to be fine. Let's click on new sample set and see what happens. Aha. Now the ability to replace the drum sounds on circuit with your own custom samples really, really opens things up quite a bit. Now you can replace these with one shot samples if you like. So a typical kick, snare, hi-hat, whatever. Uh, you can bring in different vocal samples. You could bring in slice to break beats. The point is, is that you have a total of 60 seconds of sample time. So just keep that in mind, okay? But you can approach this in some very creative ways. Now I personally have already created a full sample set which replaces all 64 sounds, but I'm not gonna load that up just yet. Let's look at the process of loading individual sounds in here, okay? So we have our 64 slots to choose from, and it says drag a wave or MP3 sample from your computer to a pad. So let me go into my browser, and right here, and in my music folder in my browser, I have a lot of samples to play with. I wanna make sure that I find something that uh, is gonna make sense. So I'm gonna look for some one-shot samples for now, and oh, here we go, my machine library. I love the machine hardware. I think the sounds that machine comes with are great. Not a fan of the software. So I often use the uh, machine sounds inside of Ableton Live. I think it'd be great to use some of these inside of Circuit as well. Let me go to the one-shots, and let me see, not sound effects, and uh, you know what, actually, not the one shots. Let me go into the drums, that'll help. So let me find a few kicks here. There's a ton of sounds. I don't necessarily need all of these. Uh, let me scroll down and find where the actual sounds are. Here we go, all right. So let's find this, drop that there. So right now I'm looking at the first 32 slots. Uh, and these are the slots that are typically associated with drum one and drum two. Um, so I have four kicks there, that's fine. Scroll back up here, so many sounds. Uh, so those are my kicks. Uh, we got some claps here. I'll just go ahead and just open the folder up. I'm gonna associate these by kind so I can get to the WAV files more easily. All right, so we'll put in a few claps. And I will put in uh, maybe a couple other odd sounds that we wouldn't normally hear on circuit. So let me go to the one shots again. The one shots have more kind of uh, effects and sort of weird sounds. My sound effects, just double click. And again, I'm not really worried with how they sound right now. The point is, is that all these sounds will sound distinctly different from what we normally hear on circuit. And let me get one more little group of sounds. Let's see, get rid of that. And I believe there is, uh, let me see, isn't there like a vocal folder in here? Vocal, yes, all right. Again, just because I want to bring in sounds that we don't typically hear on circuit, so we're clear that this is actually doing something very cool and unique. All right, so I've got 12 sounds that I want to send to circuit, all right? Now, just to be clear, uh, you're never in danger of losing the default drum sounds with circuit. You can always load the default sounds by hitting this button, load default sounds, and then sending those sounds to circuit. That's not what I'm trying to do. Right now, I just want to replace the drum sounds with these sounds that I have here. Now, keep in mind, all these empty slots when I send these samples to circuit, the empty slots are going to be erased, all right? So it's very uh, important to be aware of that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and send these to circuit. There's my send to circuit button. And uploading to circuit, this may take a few minutes. Uh, when they're telling you it takes a few minutes, this is not uh, a joke. So sit back, relax, and uh, I will see you shortly. And we're back, awesome. Okay, so these sounds have been sent to circuit. Let's verify that this actually worked. Now it says once you sent your samples, press the play button on circuit to start it. My play button is green, I will hit it. It's turning circuit on. I wanna make sure I'm able to hear audio from circuit. I still have this track, this audio track set up so I can hear what's going on. Let's go ahead and uh, hit play on circuit. I'll go to my drum parts here and I'm just gonna start laying some drum sounds down and we'll get a sense for how our samples sound in circuit. Now, like I said, the sounds that were empty in our sample editor are now blank. So that little snare sound we're hearing is not actually a sample, that's the sound of an empty slot. Let's go ahead and hit shift, drum two. I know I put some claps over here. I dig that clap, let's hold shift, drum one. Pretty cool, I'm digging that, I'm digging that. 
All right, I'm gonna go to drum three, and I know that I put some vocal samples in that second row. Now again, when I'm looking at drum three and four, typically it defaults to the samples that are in slot 33 through 64. If I wanna look at slots one through 32, I have to hit my octave button. There we go. So this should be a vocal sample. Let's go in here. Okay, it's not a vocal sample, but it's a pretty cool percussive sample. Let's go ahead and check some of these other ones out. All right, well, I like that sample the best. And let's go ahead and just go to drum slot four as well. Very cool. Once you have your own custom sounds and you can use the sequencing on circuit, it just changes everything. So we still have the ability to transpose our sounds. And we can automate that. My snare, shorten the decay time, add some distortion, filter. It all still works the same. And even add some effect, just add a little bit of reverb to my clap. Sample import is a bit of a game changer.